Alrighty guys, so welcome back to the series. In the last few episodes we looked at uh, all the different components that are in the electricity system so far, uh, but specifically in the last episode we really started getting into how to repurpose uh, existing electrical circuits, which is probably uh, the most useful thing for people at this stage who um, haven't got the time to design a full functioning circuit from scratch. Uh, but want to start utilizing what the electricity system can do uh, in their base or uh, on their particular server. So in this particular episode, we're going to have a look at um, my version of panic buttons. I've seen a couple of different designs around, but um, they're fundamentally flawed uh, for a few different reasons which I'll go into in this video. So, without further ado, let's... Alright, so we've got these four doors in front of us and we're going to pretend that all four doors are connected in our base. I've got door controllers which are paired up connected to them. I've got the electrical branches as well and they're all connected to each other. They're also connected to my panic button over here. So we're also going to pretend that this one by one is simply a portion of our base that is probably walled off which is the most safe way to do it but if you don't have space it could be in your cupboard room or somewhere else. I wouldn't recommend putting it in a normal part of your base. I would recommend putting it in a particular, maybe maybe somewhere in honeycomb um, with a bag that you can spawn in and then a box that has a wire tool within it. Then we have this circuit here. So I'm going to explain. We're using the memory cell here to control the doors. Now the only reason that we have door controllers hooked up to the doors in the first place is so that we can shut them. We're not looking to have a way of opening and closing the doors in our base. We're just having a way of having a panic button control the doors if something goes wrong. So we're going to have a look at the circuit now. So to understand how this circuit works properly, you need to know how a memory cell works. I did cover it in episode 2 of the series, so if you're unsure, go back and watch that episode. Otherwise, if you already have knowledge, that's great. So I've got it hooked up to the output at the moment, which is connected to all the door controllers, as I showed before. That means when the memory cell is set to 1, which it's currently set to 0, indicated by this red light, it will open all the doors. Now, there's no switch to actually control the doors to open like the door controller is generally supposed to be used. This is just an emergency system to shut the doors. Now, this may look like it's front doors and it's your airlocks leading into your base, but it could be any set of doors that you choose in your base. This could be your loot room doors, it could be uh, a mixture of loot room, airlocks and front door, but if you're solo, until they introduce more components, which on staging they have a wireless detonator and a receiver, which will change how this potentially works, um, it may be difficult for you to safely shut or reset this circuit, which I'll explain in a second, with the front door hooked up anyway. So you may not want to have this as your front door or hooked up to it, I mean. Anyway. The first thing that you have to do once you actually put this circuit into your base or say you've had to use this system, you need to set it so it's active. And to do that, all you do is connect the output of this timer to the set feature of the memory cell. Now I've set the timer to just one so it automatically switches. I found it easier to use a timer rather than the switch that I had in the couple of other clips just because um, there was less risk of me making a mistake and leaving the switch on. Anyway, if we flick that, all the doors will open. This is the reason that I say, especially if you're solo, at least at this point in time with the components on the... Um, 
complete server side of things and not including what's on testing branch, this may be the best option for you at the moment. Now, if this video comes out by the time a wireless receiver uh, has been implemented, then I'll include it later in the video anyway. But if it turns out that it works a little bit different than what they're planning so far, then I'll change it. What you now need to do, seems like someone's having a party over there. Anyway, we'll ignore that one, is disconnect this, connect it to the reset feature, and then you'll probably have to kill yourself if this is a closed or portion of your base, and then you'll just have to close all the doors. Now that it's actually set, if perhaps you die or you're about to get raided and some of your doors are open, let's um, pretend that some of these are our loot room doors as well. Now if only some of them are open or all of them are open, it doesn't really matter, it's going to have the same effect. Jeez, he's really having a fun time over there apparently. All we have to now do is hit this timer and it will automatically shut the door. So. The only decision you really have to make is what doors it's hooked up to, where this circuit sits in your base, and if you need it in a closed off portion and you need to spawn there. Nonetheless, it's quite a compact circuit. It can pretty much fit in any base. It's very, very simple to control. And we'll have a look at a couple of other more secure methods of doing it. This is particularly good because Although it takes a couple of steps and a little bit of understanding, what you need to keep in mind, the reason that I do it, that you have to rewire it like this, is that they need TC access if they gain access to the circuit. And if it's in Honeycomb, and they're blowing their way in, and they find this circuit, and they don't have TC access already, which is very unlikely if they're in the Honeycomb stage of your base, they're not going to worry about it. They're just going to keep blowing. By the time they actually get to your TC, it's probably too late, and this circuit is pretty much nullified anyway. So here we've got another example of the same thing, but using different components that are available to us. Now, all the different methods that I'm going to show have different pros and cons, but you could use a combination of all of them to make it essentially as complicated as you like. The better your understanding, uh, the more complicated, but still just as effective you can make it. This is to just give us a better understanding of some of the logic gates that I've already gone through earlier in the season. So here we have an XOR switch. To activate it, all I'm going to do is simply connect the electrical branch into input A, and that's going to allow pass through of the power. It's going to open the doors just like when we set the memory cell. So now all I have to do is just go close these doors and the circuit is now set. Now again, exactly the same thing. If we have a couple of doors open or perhaps all of them that are hooked up to this system to emergency shut them or activate the panic room, whatever you want to call it, all we have to do is spawn in the spot, and then all I do is switch this on. Of course, the XOR switch, when both inputs have power, don't allow pass-through. So this is obviously going to cut the power. All we have to do to reset it is a bit more simple, perhaps not as secure as the memory cell, is simply turn this off. And it's going to open the doors again. Then we just have to shut the doors, obviously much easier with a teammate, but you get the point. Let's move on. So here we've got a little bit more of a complicated setup, but I wanted to show it to you anyway. So we've got the memory cell back here and we've already set it. So some of the doors are open. We're potentially getting raided and we're worried about our loot. We have a AND switch here, which we've already gone over in previous episodes, of course. To have power passing through it, both inputs have to be active. Now what I've got I've got this timer on the outside here, which is one branch of it is leading off to one of the inputs here. The other branch of it is leading to the electrical input of this timer. So therefore, this timer cannot turn on until this timer is activated. 
I had this timer set to 20 seconds just for demonstration purposes. So this is perhaps like a two person job. It is possible to do it with one person, but if for demonstration purposes, like I've set up here, if the two timers are in separate parts of your base, which is kind of what I've designed this circuit to be like, then it may not really work well, especially in a uh, stressful situation, like when you're getting raided and you're only by yourself. This is just for concept, really. So all I do is I turn this timer on and this gives the other person 20 seconds to then shut the doors. All they have to do with this timer that's just set to one second is flick this switch. And that's it. And then of course to reset it, we just rewire this up to the set feature and start again, just like in the very first example. All right, so there is one more thing that I want to talk about before we end the episode, and it's unrelated to the main things that we were doing in this episode. And this is how to hide wires. So, say we've got our base here that I'm standing in, and we want to have an external turret or some sort of trap outside where we have a door control hooked up to it and a switch inside our base so we can open the door uh, if we think we're doing door camped or in the situation of a raid or, or something like that. But we want to make it look like um, it's not controlled or hooked up to electricity. So I've got my switch in here. I'm going to run my wire to here. I'm going to put it on the foundation and what I've done, I've built a foundation here, another square here, and then another one, but then I've deleted these two while I'm building this. I'm going to now run the foundation down to here, run it all the way across over to this foundation, have it come up through the bottom of it, go up to the door controller here, and now we've got our wire running through these foundations. Now what I can do, if I simply now build the foundations, my wire is now hidden, and unless you come into the base already, you can't see that it's there at all. Now, to hide this properly in this sort of situation, what you want to do is have the garage door on this side, as if we have it here, you can see that the door controller is poking through a little bit, which is not what you want. So if we place it like this, it's completely hidden, and then we can control the door from inside our base without making it look like there's a wire running at all. You can clearly see there's absolutely nothing visible. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for the episode today. Now, this one was a little bit shorter than usual, so I'd just like to take the time to really, truly thank everybody that supported the series so far. No matter if you disliked the video, liked the video, commented, or subscribed to the channel as well. I really do appreciate every single little bit of feedback that I get, because it helps me out a whole bunch. Now, if you've been following me on Twitter already, then you may have seen me post a couple of times with the hashtag Direction2019. Now, this is a word that I've chosen for the whole of 2019 to really focus on and base pretty much everything that I do this year, um, just to give me a little bit of inspiration and, surprise, surprise, direction for the year. Now, this concept was presented to me by a friend recently um, as an alternative to, uh, say, New Year's resolutions or anything like that, which I've never really got into. Now, that works for some people, and that's great, but I found this one kind of related to uh, my morals and, and just my way of thinking, more importantly, um, so I thought I'd really give it a go, and it's, you know, it's helped me stay motivated um, and, and clear in, in my thought process about what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do pretty much everything. Um, now, the reason that I wanted to take the time to explain this was... You know, this is essentially a big reason why I've started doing these videos. You know, I want to get out of uh, my main job um, or working for anybody else and really focus on digital content. Now I work pretty long hours, um, most of which is night shift and 
stuff like that. So I only get a couple of days a week to do these videos. Um, but, you know, already I love doing it and I, and I love the, you know, feedback that I've got from you guys. So um, keep it coming. I really, really appreciate it. Um, it's, it's fantastic and I really enjoy doing this so far. So we've got one more episode left for the season. The last episode is going to focus on a bit more of a or a much more complicated circuit, really. But if uh, if you have understanding of the components so far, then you should be able to wrap your head around it. I really hope you guys enjoy it. it should be out in a couple of days, um, and we'll see you in that one. As usual, if you dislike the video, hit that thumbs down. But if you did like it, smash that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Twitter if you haven't already. Any links that I have mentioned in this video will be in the description below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.